Oh, wait, I was live. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Is oh, it coming in? Is it? Yeah, it was coming in. I could literally see it. Oh, uh, I, it's not, not on mine, but I'll... That's fine. Oh, for crying out loud. Hey, I think we're up now. Ah. You know what? I do have a backup recording. So all our introduction, I'll just re-upload it. It'll all be good. Anyway, folks, gotcha. we're jumping into the spoiler zone right away. We will say hi to the chat momentarily or shortly or in a bit. All right. Um, Jim, story. Let me, well, let me first ask you this before we, did you see this film in theaters when it first came out? I don't believe I did. I, th I think it was one of those, uh, uh, stealthy things that you, you know, it, sometime in the eighties, you have the TV on, you're like, Hey, you know, it just happens to be on and you're, you're realizing that you're into it as you're watching it. Yeah. And, uh, it was one of the, like, Hey, this is actually kind of a charming movie. You know, it, it was one of those things, and, and uh, I've seen it subsequently a, a bunch of times on television. But yeah, no, I didn't see it. Uh, I did not see it in the theater. How about you? Did you do you have a recollection of the first time? Because it's one of those ones that just sort of slides into your consciousness, isn't it? For me, anyway. Um, I remember this from the eighties. Mm -hmm. Um. But no, I don't think I saw it in the theater. I think it was a renter. Yes, yeah, that's the other thing, the height of the video rental, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, boom. And um, the, I also think, I seem to remember it, and this goes to my first really story-related question, I seem to almost remember it as like, oh, this is an old-timey movie. Like, it's, it's something mm -hmm. pre when I was watching movies. You know, yeah. and it, because of its vibe. And mm. uh, so let me ask you this first question. Of course, it's a Christmas film. What else would you call this flick genre wise? Hmm. Would it be? I'd say it's coming of age, but it, it's it's kind of su such a tight tight little bit and he doesn't really uh, come to any grand realization there's just you know sort of a bunch of stuff happens so i don't know if it would be a classic coming of age it's more of a family not even a drama slice but, of but life eh? slice of life yeah, yeah. and it's very uh, you know it feels like it comes from a series of writings um it, it feels like um, episodic it's episodic and they don't make a big deal and i mean this in a good way they don't make a big deal about transitions it just it, it literally goes from one almost like the uh, cinematic version of saying anyway, like they'll something will conclude and then he'll run to his mailbox and see if he got the little orphan Annie uh, uh, decoder ring or something yeah. to that effect, you know. Yeah. And so there's not a lot. It's a very easily it's a very easy uh, uh, running movie. Like there's not a lot of, hey, guys, check this out. It, it just takes its time. It's almost like a storybook story. It's kind of literary in a sense that way, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It, it pulls it, pulls it off. It's very, I put in my notes, I don't know if this is accurate, but it's kind of a low fi presentation throughout the whole thing, which I think for, works in its favor. I, you know, I, I like to, I, I, I like that description, Jim. I like to call this film uh, that one I recommended to you the other day, uh, A.J. Fickery, uh, the, the mm -hmm. storied life of A.J. Fickery. I, I, I think of these as low arc films. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no. Yeah. It. it I, <laughs> they put it in my notes. I was like, uh, I think I said <laughs> Ralph is no. <laughs> Ralph may be a protagonist, but he's definitely no hero. Mm -mm. You know, with a mission. I, I mean, he has a, you know, the mission of any eight year old, a BB gun. Mm. But even that, it's not like he's achieving anything. He doesn't go get it. He doesn't have yeah. any obstacles in his way. That's he just wants <laughs> like any kid. Um, he doesn't display any heroic behavior. 
you know, like it's just very episodic and very mm -hmm. of, of, of truly of a child's perspective or let's mm -hmm. say an adult's perspective of a child's perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the honest adult, let's say, you know, <laughs> Yeah, and and there's some things that are a little bit disturbing, like the fact that they just let their the friend uh, stick his tongue to the pole, and you know the first inclination was let's get help. It's just like ah, yeah. oh, I'm a, not my fault. I'm out of here, and <laughs> and they wouldn't even cover for him. At, you know, we've all done it. I've done it. It happened to my daughter once when she was I think two. You know, it's a scary thing, and you could really hurt yourself. And uh, that's always a sort of a, a, a brutal scene to watch. But uh, yeah, no help. They're just like, oh, I don't know. They, yeah, they <laughs> jetted. They yeah. split. Not, not my tongue. Which is exactly when I, I wrote that down. It's like, but yeah. what I loved about it was, and you don't even see that except maybe old Simpsons. Yeah. That kind of. Yeah honesty about how children actually are yeah, yeah you know which is yeah you just oh we're gonna get into trouble run yeah yeah you know it sort of reminds me of the the peanuts the one peanuts frame where charlie brown sort of says uh, sarcastically uh the laughter of small children as they're heckling him about something <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's it's pretty brutal, and he's cranky, and he's, you know, he's he's as whiny as his brother. You know, I'm done with the parade. Oh, I'm just using the bathroom. Give yeah. me a few minutes, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, I, he's yeah, definitely not a hero, as you said. Yeah, I and uh, uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Jelly Duck uh, calls it maybe more of a black comedy than coming of age. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe a. Maybe black is too strong, um, but a cynics comedy, or this yeah. somebody might call the, the 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 filmmaker cynics, but they're more that they well no we're realists. I don't know. Well, I think that'll come up when we're talking yeah. about the message yeah. uh, a, a little further because there's it's almost like an answer to some of the other things that are yeah. out there. Well, it, and that's um, yeah, I've got questions related to that too. And so, you know what, Jelly Duck, we're gonna Ahmed, great to see you here. By the by, uh, yeah. we're gonna pin that. And to answer quickly as a quick sidebar, to answer DMG's question here, or first thing he's seeing is the spoiler zone. Yeah, there is a bit of a preamble what we'll probably end up doing is just re uploading the video. Cause I was recording it from before we started, uh, you know, something between OBS and YouTube did not communicate, but you only lost me setting up the film. Um, and Jim and I's great bit, which we will replay for you after the story about our wonderful, uh, well, just how much we love you and Jim's cousin. Jim will re -ask that question. Uh, okay. Um, here is, let's, let me ask you this. Um, what do you think makes for, like, I would call this a great Christmas flick, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And you're right. Yeah. It's episodic. It's, how did you put it? Writerly or? Yeah, it's yeah. it's very yeah. It feels kind of writerly. It feels literary, almost. Well, not literary. That, that'd be the wrong thing. But yeah, it feels writerly. Yeah. Um, so would we call this like this is almost and it's hard to say it's a story. Although I got to admit, like the the act breaks make sense. It's like mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is like yeah, we're done with the setup. We're we and we have a weird kind of action now um when it there's a dark moment and then a kind of a great like i mean just get me right here moment after uh ralphie <laughs> has a melt as as like just totally emotionally falls apart after he beats up the bully um yes. and him and his mom have a moment and uh but then afterwards there there's a a kind of oh let's get back to the action which is ostensibly how he's going to con his 
the, the those around him out of this BB gun, con them, convince mm-hmm. them, you know. Um, but it it's where an act break should be, give or yeah. take a few minutes either side, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a weird kind of. It's not what I call a classic story. Certainly no hero's journey. Yeah. Does that any of that make sense to you or? Yeah, you know, I, I was trying to think of a, a similar thing. He's he's a child. Uh, he has no money of his own. He has no, you know, he can write away for, for cheap stuff or, or what have you. It's funny, both him and his father receive things in the mail that they, they, they desperately want. But um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, he's almost like... Yes, they do. <laughs> this is going to sound like a real weird comparison, but he's almost like one of those... If you watch something about the Chinese imperial court and the eunuchs have no power, and you can argue in a, the, the similarity between a eunuch and eight, an eight-year-old boy, but all he does is he tries to massage the situation, right? He tries <laughs> yeah. to, he tries, you know, just that whisper campaign kind of. He expects his te- he's, he expects so much so that he expects his essay that he's written for school to go through his teacher and onto his parents the efficacy of that but he, he sort of expects that to be part of his campaign so uh yeah it's very uh, kind of a unique uh unique to tell it from i think his a powerless child's point of view it's yeah. not sort of the the wonder of christmas it's just like mm, how am i going to get what i want you know yeah well and and i want to put a pin in that because that actually goes to uh uh when i when i ask you a few quick quick questions regarding the craft um would you yeah i yeah not coming of age it's definitely episodic so slice slice of life we've zeroed in on and so or slices of a child's life maybe yeah um is there anything about that i think this is a really good example but sometimes it's easier to kind of point out its strengths when we think of a bad one, but I'm having a hard time thinking of a bad one of these. Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, you know, you'd probably go for something that nothing pops to mind because I tend not to watch a lot of, you know, those kinds of movies, but something that would lean heavily on nostalgia rather than anything else, you know, uh, now that, you know what? Well, think on it. Um, that does, Give me a. Uh, this was shot in the Reagan era. Mm. Um, it is. Is it a nostalgic trip to the past, though? Or is it almost anti nostalgia? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the parents aren't. Like, I mean, yeah. Is it a nostalgic trip into the past? Is the story of. Uh... Yeah, I, 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 you know, I was going to put down uh, in terms of craft. They don't do a lot of that. The wonder of the past. There's not a lot of that, that kind of shot with the, with the, um, with the music of wonder, you know what I mean? Like when, when they, when they're unveiling a scene for you, it's just there. Like, you know, we talk about the male gaze, this movie would be a perfect thing for the mechanics gaze because of all the great old cars, but the great old cars are just there. They don't do any kind of like the zooming in. There's, there's a really beautiful car. Oh yeah. Sorry. In one scene, there's a beautiful car coming down the road. You see it for about five seconds. I literally went, holy crap. And, you know, look at that thing. That's gorgeous. It's sort of a crimson car driving past Ralphie's house. And they, but they don't stop and pause and say, oh, check this out. Like, it's not. There's not even shots of like chrome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's a long shot of an idyllic house. Yes. And, and as, and, and children playing in yards and, Mm -hmm. And yeah, and they don't get, you know, they don't look like they've, I mean, it, it, the, the, their clothing is all period clothing, but it doesn't look like they've been dressed, you know, like they typically do in, in 
shows with children in them. They, they're not, you know, no one's stylish. Their, yeah, there's no, there's not no a, stylish yeah. involved. So, and, and in terms of that, too, another shot of the cars is the, the flat tire scene where the cars are sort of coming towards the camera. And it's just, it's presented as the car. Like, there's nothing in, with a bridge in the background and that kind of thing. And it, it's, it, so in that, it's not, it's not, um, patting itself on its on the back for its nostalgia i don't think there's none of that kind of you know the harpy music that you always get when when i was a child this is how i grew up <laughs> nothing like that it just it's like get on with the show you know kind of thing so it just it's very it's very a matter of fact i guess is what i'm trying to say and and it yeah. doesn't tell it doesn't prompt the audience to think oh what a grand old age so yeah no 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 i love that i love the way you put that yeah matter of fact this story is matter of fact mm. you know the even the narration which um I, I think is just some of the best actually you know what i gotta hold myself there uh sure. th but the narration is such an important part of the story of we are being told the story it's like the yeah. Um, without that narration, without it telling, we, we, it's matter of factly shot, performed the, the, the scenes are all pretty matter of fact. There's the only time I think you could say it got, uh, arty or, sh you know, presented to kind of give that true child's eye of dread was the Santa clause mm -hmm. thing and point of view. that and, and and very like you know you'd see they're using some fisheye lens or something like they're mm -hmm. pulling out all the stops um otherwise matter of fact straightforward shooting straightforward scenes straightforward everything and it's the narration uh, us being told how to interpret everything we're seeing Mm -hmm. You know, being given the an inner monologue, which is, you know, and I think that's maybe where you you, you talk about that writerly. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I, I mean, this is one of the first times I'm like, you know, I'm having a hard time not referring to what an amazing script. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's a key to this story is that all those choices they made and mm -hmm. that the narration provides that the bridge between episodes. Yeah. You know, yeah. in what really I, is a slice of life, a really that's a, obviously post, you know, post Halloween, post Memorial Day, I believe November 11th is in, in the United States. Uh just before um or did they already have yeah they've already had thanksgiving thanksgiving has happened mm -hmm. and they are now moving towards christmas so it really is like set in a few weeks yeah you know um yeah. so yeah like maybe it isn't slices it's a slice it's like here's a mm -hmm. month in a child's life yeah everything's yeah. straightforward except for that, you know, maybe a couple of scenes, his fantasy world. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, speaking of which, another question I have for you, was there any moments where you got a little, Oh, here comes the cringe, you know, of a film that's almost 40 years old. Yeah. Uh, you, you mean cringe emotionally or, or intellectually or, or, or whatever? Or, or either uh you know whenever you're you're <laughs> the uh the scene in the the, the chinese restaurant although it's it's, it's charming you know they, they sort of the old joke about uh the asian people not being able to say the letter l but <laughs> which is yeah. not a chinese thing it's a japanese thing actually but uh they don't have the letter l in their alphabet i lived there and spoke a little bit of it although it's evaporating every year but but yeah so it, you know uh, they have <laughs> ru instead of l like yeah. uh, haru hall would be haru anyway so aside from being 
inaccurate. Um, you know, I, I think people might take exception, but it wasn't really dealt with all that strongly, and, and they don't present them as as dummies, right? Yeah. It, and it's a very brief scene. Yeah. But, uh, well, and um, I, I'm not, but I'm not asking for cringe moments. I'm asking for moments yeah. where you're like, here comes the cringe. Oh, I see. You know, I, 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 to give you an yeah. like, I mean, I was. I mean, whenever we go back to these movies that I enjoyed then, I'm always like, oh, this is going to be a ton of offense. And because it's all about the BB, the BB gun, I'm like, yeah, uh, I I could even almost like a Mandela effect moment of, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some offensive stuff with engines. Oh, Um, yes. Yeah. But there it is in that early in the first act. And it's. It's obviously he's <laughs> almost yeah. in like a village people's get up of a Western with yes. like, wow, that's a lot of rhinestones. Yeah. Um, they are, the creeping marauder scene. The creepy marauder scene. But, but they are the bad guys. He may be yes, a cowboy, yeah. a heroic cowboy, but we're actually not for a 1983 that it's never, it's like, huh. And, I guess this I'm kind of I'm surprised at Jim. I mean, there is uh, later on uh, is oh my dad liked to negotiate like a like an Arab trader, you know, and it's like ooh, yeah. ouch, <laughs> yikes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but given the time it's shot in and then the time it's set in, this isn't mm. that bad. <laughs> like I, again, yeah. this is. Uh, like, kind of like I'm thinking of Caddyshack and some of these other films where I'm like, I enjoyed it. This is going to be bad. And it's like, wow, this is okay. That's inappropriate. That wouldn't fly now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was uh, in the quote section of IMDb. They have one reference to uh, a walk basher or something like that. But I, I don't think it's true. Like when the dad sw- has those intelligible f- swears, somebody actually wrote some of them down and yeah. uh, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty, low key but uh yeah yeah so yeah i i, I mean they yeah, could have gone in a totally different direction uh the the bad guys are sort of mix you know a mix of white i think there's a couple uh you know african american dudes in there but they're you know they're bad guys it's sort of chillingly there's a pile of bodies there with the x's over their eyes at, at the end of that which uh, i was flash yeah it's just cartoony i mean it keeps it yeah Cartoony, and it's you know it's exactly the daydreams I I used to shoot Nazis from the car on the way home from the lake. Exactly, you know, so I, and they were never yeah. just wounded. Yeah, they were yeah. dead. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me let me. Uh, okay, maybe it is. Maybe it's time to get into the meaning of this thing because in so many ways, um, this isn't. But before we do that, Jim, what was your favorite scene from this flick? Especially I haven't rewatched it recently. You know, and that it, goes for uh, anyone, everybody still in the chat. What was your favorite? That's a good question. I, I think, um, you know, it's, it's easy to say at, at, to, to, to bring it to the end. But I, it's interesting. One of the interesting things in it is that Darren McGavin and Melinda Dillon playing the mother and the father who are credited as the old man and mother. Yeah. <laughs> old, the old man, Parker, mother, Parker. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, they, uh, they have quite different acting uh, styles. Like she's a lot more, you know, Academy Award, I think nominee. Um, and, and she's, she's a lot more sort of earthy and stuff. And Darren McGavin was kind of, and not a criticism. He was sort of doing a sitcom dad, a little bit of, okay. sort of so we're not actually going to hear about a scene, are we? No, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> not anything I can actually clip. No, but Hey, but thanks. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm interrupting. The, when you get to the end, their different styles when they both sort of calm down and they're giving uh, uh, the lead character uh, his gun, finally giving him his, his gun for his present. And they sort of settle down and they look at each other. I think for the first time, they're sort of on the, even though she was surprised by the gift, it, mood wise, they're in the same space for the first time in the movie. And there's, there's actually some sort of tenderness and Darren McGavin is so 
it's brought him such joy to give his son what he wanted because he got that when he was young. Yeah. And so that, I, I think that really, it's a, it, it sort of takes a while to get there, but I think, you know, you can see them as a, where before you're like, how are these two a couple? You know, you, it, you sort of see that a little bit towards the end. It's a little more obvious than it had been before. Uh, so that's probably my when they when they sort of come together like that. I, I kind of I quite like that. And my wife was commenting on it, too. You know, just so, oh, look at the joy he's gotten. And, you know, they, they're all yeah. everything settled. All the heck, everything that's yeah. hectic is just calmed down. And it's time for the denouement almost. Well, and it, it's also because they didn't give it to him. He did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was the dad who gave it to him. And she's kind of but she is she's caught up in the moment of, you know, boy's happy the it's christmas her husband is very happy like in a joyous kind of way for a guy who you know spent a fair bit of his time enraged or in in love with a a, a horrific lamp Um, yes yes (laughs) i'm not jealous of that lamp. i'm not jealous of that lamp she says yeah I think uh, I want to uh, comment on a couple of things DMG brought up before we move on, especially as we're kind of talking about cringe factor for a bit. And it's like, uh, it says, I think there's a certain forgiveness for the cr- cringe factor since these are the memories of a kid. Like South Park gets away with Cartman being like Archie Bunker only because. Um, yeah, I'm going to disagree with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, DMG, what I'm talking about when I think of cringe, but nobody cringed about that in 1983. No one. I didn't. Nobody did. It's cringy. Like if that was done now, um, even setting back in the past, it. I think it would have been it, it just would have been a harder scene. They would have had to talk around it. But yeah, I don't think anyone found the Arab trader reference offensive, except, you know, it, it, you know, Arab North Americans watching it going, well, there's that again. Um, you know, the Chinese, like I'm talking about mainstream culture in early 1980s, probably wouldn't have had a problem with any of this. It's only now that we kind of, we're looking at a lot of this stuff differently that we go, Ooh. Yeah. 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 And, and why do we go, Ooh, it's like, I laughed at that uh, at the time. I thought that would have been funny, (laughs) you know? where we have a cringe moment. Um, yeah, I, I I think what we do now is we we can maybe not forgive it, uh, but kind of acknowledge, well, that was the early 80s. You know, and it's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Does that, do you know what I mean? You know, it's an interesting exercise is to watch something like Blazing Saddles with your kids and sort of watch their reactions. Because that's, I mean... You know, asking I could defend older, every word <laughs> older white guys like, like this, but you can you can uh, sort of watch it through their eyes. And yeah. they're like, how did you know, specifically with Black, Blazing Saddles, no. they just the, how did this get made? You know, and and uh, and I mean, that's an extreme example. But, that, but. but that's an interesting thing. That's an interesting point, Jim. I now this is I'm not a big fan of Jared Bowers. I think he's you know, he's one of those guys who's going more right wing every every day. It's like, buddy, <laughs> dial it down. Uh, but he does make a great point The there's two parts of communication. And I'm simplifying something he simplified from, you know, a lot of critical theory. Uh, but there's two parts of communication. There's the, uh, you know, the the person saying something and their intent. And then there's the person hearing and their interpretation. Um, and so you do have to look at context. You do have to look at a lot of things. And we are responsible for our interpretation to a degree. Blazing Saddles is a great uh, a great example of uh, a lot of young people. Your, your kids aren't the only ones. I have friends with their kids going, this is awful. And it's like, yeah, because you've decided to interpret it that way. You've not taken into you have not taken its context you know, part of the comedy, part of the ways in it worked was because it was so the the American Western, just a racist genre, full stop. 
And even then it was like, yeah, uh, Mel Brooks was putting paid to a genre that was just had reached a point. It was old. It was tired. It was bigoted. And he's pointing it out. He's not, they're not using N word for the sake of, mm. Hey, look, I'm saying the N word. That's the comedy. And so, uh, because the world has changed, you don't need to do blazing saddles anymore. It's not that it couldn't be made. It doesn't need to be made. It, the comedy wouldn't, it's, it's very much of its time, but every word fucking works. You know what? You couldn't mm. to do blazing saddles, but bowdlerize it. You'd be like, well, what are they saying here? You need the N word in Blazing Saddles. You need, uh, is it Cleavon James? Cleavon? Uh, Cleavon Little? Cleavon Little, thank you. Okay. You need Cleavon Little going, don't shoot or the N word gets it. Even me saying it that way, it's like, well, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, even though you'd know yeah. what the, the place marker is there for in that. Um, yeah, so. Um, it's, I think it becomes, it's it, it, coming back to coming back to this movie. The cringe factor is the, what does it say about me cringe that I found this funny at a time when it's now it's like, yeah, that's yikes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, you know, in the eighties too, there was, um, you know, long duck dong and you know, on, on, uh, the Molly Ringwald movie there and uh oh uh, yeah you know things like 16 that. candles and, and which we have done candles. yes and and you know that was a a, a sort of an easy go-to comedy oh, moment I mean yeah. I remember one there was one thing that they did about like a comedy they did that and was sort of a Bru it wasn't Bruce like Lee John thing. Hughes was doing something where you're going ah oh, he's making a comment about racism in a genre no, yeah, he was no. just doing a racist gag. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, and there, there was, there was one that one promo for the sort of karate comedy, and one of the big guffaws was somebody said Disney Rand instead of Disneyland. You know, and that was like high humor for for back then. Comedy gold. <laughs> yeah, no that's kidding. A, but, uh, and and yeah. that I think is that's where we can have these cringe moments, where it's like, oh, that was okay. And, and let's say we have to acknowledge the time and place it came out. Um, but it's still no Asian person was watching that and going, oh boy, this is, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that's kind of that, that fundamental difference. But again, going back to this film, it like it, the, not the cringe that I was expecting that I'm usually expecting Jim, when we look back at some of these films, it's like, yeah. it's always like, I'm like nervous in a way. I'm like, you know, is this really a good idea? <laughs> what am I going to see? <laughs> you know, set in the Midwest in the rust belt. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There is another thing though. No, we knew the guy liked Oldsmobiles. We don't know what the dad did. Mom was a yeah. homemaker, you know, a housewife in the parlance of the time it was set. Yeah. Um, but not even that. No social observations. Mm. You know, it really is like I like the way you put that, Jim. Matter of fact. Mm. Uh Jim, before we move on, uh you had asked about this earlier, but you know, maybe it's maybe it's it, just in case people haven't. Uh, uh, you had mentioned. I know you're worried about your cousin. Yes. Well, my my cousin has no access to YouTube. Rob, is there any way that he could access our show in another way? That is a great question, Jim, and I'm glad you asked it again to give me an opportunity to answer it again. As a matter of fact. There's the Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies audio podcast. You can actually, <laughs> that's right, everybody. Yay. Link in the description to the podcast. Um, 
we do now have a full audio podcast. You can, of course, you can go to the link in the description. It'll bring you to the Anchor website, download, uh, listen on uh, on there or download the episodes. But you can also just look up Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies or Rob Christensen on your favorite podcast player. <laughs> We're on uh, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Apple uh, podcasts we're and that that list only will only be growing as a matter of fact last week's episode Jim is already up uh where we overanalyzed uh black panther wakanda forever so oh, folks forever. yeah go check it out uh i think this is also another great opportunity jim <laughs> to beg our wonderful loyal uh viewers for a a like a subscription, and of course, a ringy ding of that bell. Oh, wait, <laughs> oh, sleigh bells! Awesome. Uh, I think they need a tune-up. <laughs> um. Uh, oh, here's uh, going back just briefly to our cringe. Uh, Walt, he says, Walt uh, 65. Great, hey, great Walt. seeing you, Walt. Uh, good to see you. Tiffany's was really bad. Yes, it was. Um, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Woo. Uh, yeah, that, that's a moment of, wow. I, here's, a, here's a question for everybody in the chat. Um, what is a movie now where it had a scene could have been a great movie or a meet or just a movie you're enjoying. And then all of a sudden it has one of those cringy kind of, whether it be Andy Rooney's, um, you know, horrific, uh, Mickey Rooney, uh, Mickey Rooney. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Andy Rooney. Oh, you ever <laughs> notice? <laughs> Anyway, cringe moment that kind of wrecks the movie for you. You, you. you can't watch it again, or when you do, there's just this big asterisk on it. Uh, anyway, love to uh, love to hear that. Um, all right, Jim, let's get back to this movie. Yeah. And uh, let, let's get into the meaning, because we've been kind of drifting up against it. Yeah. Um, uh, all the way all the way through our conversation um i'd asked this before but maybe i'll ask it again so, so it definitely came out in the reagan era uh which you know the 80s it had some nostalgic films uh some films looking back mm -hmm. um you know Back to the Future was about to come out, and there had a, a fetishized view of the 50s. Mm -hmm. You know, like all those tropes you talk about, the the cars, the like all those visual motifs and everything, whereas here it's like, it's none of that. Back lanes are filthy. The snow looked like yeah. snow. Um, mm -hmm. Is this an anti-nostalgic film? You know, I, uh, it, yeah, it doesn't, it, it doesn't do the typical nostalgia. It doesn't take the tr traditional nostalgic path, in my opinion. It, 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 and like I said, it doesn't dwell too much on things. There's a, there's a few s sort of stagey shots with the products on the shelf in the kitchen, you know, with the sort of the graphic design of the, the, the 1930s, and 1940s. But yeah, it, it uh, I don't think there's anything and, and nothing's said to, to tell us how to feel about it. Like there's, Oh, remember the days these were, this was the best time of my life. Nothing like that. So typically you're fed those things a lot. I, you know, the weird thing with a lot of nostalgic movies is that, you know, the uh, plot or whatever is the action that drives it is quite horrifying. Like stand by me, <laughs> you know, like it's, you yeah. know that kind of there's a little bit of a that's more of the stage of nostalgia for a stage of life rather than an age you know like you never have friends as good as you do when you're 13 or, or what have yeah. you but um there, you know there's a lot of other ones that are sort of you know it's a nostalgic setting but horrible things sort of you know story is conflict right so there's got to be something there but uh 
yeah, I don't, I don't think we're told how to feel about this at all, which is another nice aspect of the uh, of the movie. Would you say maybe um, the um, what do you think it's saying about like it? It certainly seems to be, well, it's not anti-family. No. Um, not 100% sure it's pro-family either. Families seem to be, again, I'm going to keep coming back to your phrase there. Families seem to be, well, it's just a, a fact of a child's life or a fact of this child's life. But it doesn't seem to editorialize on, like there's never a moment where it says, I always felt safe coming into my home. Mm -hmm. Just ever, you know, um, parents were oppositional forces. Yeah. You know, uh, except those times when they're not. <laughs> and then yeah. that is never actually acknowledged. Mm -hmm. You know, except that one moment, which I, I, I felt in here that the scene and I, I, going back to the question I asked you, I think my favorite scene, uh, or maybe it's more of a sequence, is after um, after Ralphie kind of just loses it, beats up the bully, and he's so, and then the emotion is coming out of him, and he's crying, and his mother kind of she's like, you know what, we're just, you know what, we're gonna get you home, and we're gonna settle you down. The cold, like that whole sequence of that that whole sequence where it's he is he is letting this stuff out and his mother is just rolling with it and then has him lie down and i i i love that whole sequence love it yeah. all love the um love the moment and then there's his brother worried is like, well, dad's going to kill him because this is mm -hmm. way beyond any of the other things that they regularly lie about run away from. <laughs> this is like a whole new level of of sin and, and therefore parental consequences. And she's like, relax. And just that whole sequence uh, is about the most emotionally impacting of the whole freaking film. Mm. But I, I mean, it doesn't seem to be other than just an accurate and one line in, uh, one line in the narration was like, yeah, my mother and I's relationship was always different, different after that. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm, I'm. Oh, she covered for him. Yeah. Yeah. When she, when she says yeah. I took care of it, he was in a fight. She doesn't cover for him. Right. Mm -hmm. She's. He was in a fight. Well, what kind of fight? Well, I took care of it. You know, I talked yeah. to him. And hey, look, the Green Green Bay is playing Chicago this <laughs> yeah. weekend. He goes, yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Too. But yeah. but even he's like, what, what? You know, like he's he's a parent. He's not he's not stupid, and he's yeah. like kind of. It's like wait, wait, what? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I do that whole sequence that I I remember that. There's a few sequences from this film I, I've always remembered, but I remember that sequence and that emotional impact of, mm. and I just, I, I, I don't know if it's the heart of the film. I couldn't imagine the film without it though. And it's mm. got to be the most like the, where you really are dealing with a child's emotions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that it's still, uh, um, still a relationship of uh of dependence to so, yeah. as much as he doesn't want to uh think so but you know and it's earned right and and it's oh. i i, I it, you know it's over the the course of the movie uh yeah it's a real earned moment and i think it uh i, I love that settle it's... down settle down settle <laughs> down now yeah. now settle down yeah but it's not settle down it's yeah. set, like she is. She's, yeah. It's the, the cold, the, the water, but she's, she's not hosing him down. No. 
You know, like yeah. it's, the, it's the most caring moment to the film with yeah. very little caring, <laughs> you know, in, yeah. in some ways. Um, well, it, now let's go back to it. Like one of your favorite scenes, the, the gift of the gun. <laughs> Christmas. Yes. What? Yeah. What is this film saying to us? What, what, what is Bob Clark and Lee Shepard want? What, what are they saying to us? What do they want us? What are we supposed to take away from this movie? So a lot of the, the Oh, look at this. Back... Hot girls are waiting here. Oh, again, <laughs> every day of my life. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Folks, the, uh, I know it's it's. I shouldn't put it up on the thing. It's like encouraging, you know. It's like feeding squirrels. You're just encouraging rodents to keep coming back. But yep. to me, it's a sign that we're starting to make it. Anyway, sorry, Jim. Continue. Uh, yeah, you know, if you look at at some of the the big specials that have survived, you know, thirty, forty, fifty years. We were just watching Grinch the other day, narrated by Boris Karloff. Uh, and, and there were Charlie Brown as well. And they're from the sixties and they were very much, uh, anti, um, you know, anti stuff, anti commercial. And, yeah. you know, they were more, you know, the, the lesson in those were more, you should pursue the spiritual aspect of Christmas instead. And this one is, it's not rabidly opposite, but it's opposite. Like it, it's, for me, I, I was thinking about it today, and and uh, I I just put let kids enjoy Christmas, and I don't think it's reactionary in the sort of the right wing kind of no. sense. Is, this is how you should you know it's not hardcore and it's not delivered uh, uh, super aggressively, but it's just it's a child's Christmas. Yeah. There's not a lot of existential because kids don't get there. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, at that age, even though they're reading Silas Marner in school, which is kind of a <laughs> seems beyond their level. But anyway, um, the uh, the it doesn't sort of graft an adult's perspective onto a child. Right. Never. Child. The, you know, my Christmas at eight, I, I wouldn't really you know, I think about stuff. Right. You know, the, the Star Wars action figures commercials would come on during Spider-Man. The fantasies of being the hero. You get the tree, Even though the know, second yeah. your idiot buddy glue, you know, sticks his tongue onto a hunk of metal, you're gone. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, the yeah. bells ringing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rules is rules. Off you go, but, you little N-A-Z-I. <laughs> orders. <laughs> I was obeying orders. But I think this is very much just, you know, it's just like let let children enjoy Christmas or or it's not a plea even. It's just a portrayal of a child who's who's just enjoying Christmas as a child, I think, with a lot of, without a lot of the sort of philosophical aspects of it. And again, in no way does it feel reactionary or like, you know, and even the Ovaltine thing where he's desperate to find the message from Little Orphan Annie. There's a little bit of it. In, you, you know, he, he solves the code and it's, don't forget to drink your Ovaltine. He goes, <laughs> and he literally says, commercial. I wrote it in, <laughs> crummy commercial. So, so even there, it does recognize it a bit, like the kid's exasperation with that, because he thought it yeah. would actually be a thing. But um, yeah, at, at no point is it strong arming into thinking that it's just, it's just sort of a, you know, very much a, a, a streamlined look at a, at a kid's, uh, uh, Christmas, yeah, with a lot, of, uh, without a lot of that existential sort of philosophizing. How does this sound? There's a reason I've got Walt's comment pinned. Uh, I like the way he uh, put it. Almost every other Christmas movie is modeling Martha is modeling Martha Stewart perfection, and this is warts all right. and all. For Boomers, it is especially accurate too. Um, I wonder if this is if there's a you know, a, a conscious, conscious meaning, uh, and we'll get into subtext later, uh, or well, shortly, actually, we're almost, uh, we're almost done our hour. <laughs> um, yep. that it is saying something about children, mm -hmm. uh, by basing the overt narrative fully from his perspective. Oh, excuse me. We never go and see the 
<laughs> we never go, Jim, and see the um, uh, uh, we never see the furnace. There's no furnace gag. Um, we never see a parent teacher conversation. We briefly yeah. overhear, but only because he is in earshot when he throws his buddy under the bus oh, with yeah, the soap and the one. swear word. That's like, horrible. <laughs> Jeez, friend. And and wait and then of course very of the time that kid getting a licking. Yeah. You know, there might have been a wooden spoon involved. Like we hear You're smacks. Screaming like, over the phone. <laughs> Um, that 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 is what it's saying is like yeah I, I it, maybe not a commentary on other Christmas films uh, yeah. but I, I don't know how like I mean all these guys are Hollywood guys they're all they were all like late career guys yeah. you know yeah there some of them are gonna be going it's like oh yeah this is the gold i'm sick of seeing scripts where child grows up learning a lesson has to overcome stuff has to this is almost like seinfeld before seinfeld yeah yeah no i, I just thought that yeah <laughs> just when you said that yeah um but and presenting children as they actually are not and I don't mean this in a sexual way, but there's no fetishization of childhood that, mm -hmm. they're, yeah. oh, they're so yeah. innocent and pure. And no, they can be violent. They can be incredibly weak. Uh, you know, <laughs> they disloyal lie <laughs> yeah. and they want what they want. That is part of the innocence of childhood is, well, I want that. Why? Because I want it. Mm -hmm. gimme um and i think that is part of the part of the genius and i think in that this movie is saying something about the way we look at childhood the way we look at christmas um and i think that leads me to you know and this might be a perfect time to segue into our into a new part that I don't even have a graphic for uh but I do think that without the narration without that in, the adults interpretation of his of his childhood experience and that mm -hmm. honest interpretation well as honest as Lee uh Shepard could ever be uh cuz it sounds like boy he loved to BS and always kind of leave you wondering if he's lying yeah. or if it's the truth um but yeah, I think this film, Jim, is a, uh, uh, yeah, without that narration, without that otherworldly voice saying, listen, I was a kid. All I gave a crap was about blah, 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 the BB with the compass. <laughs> a great moment with the teacher as a Victorian or no, no, maybe more early 20th century. Yeah. You know, it's this, oh, and the thing that tells time, <laughs> the thing that tells time. And this is the first time I ever got that gag. It's like yeah. the thing that, wait, you mean a watch, a clock? It's, how did I not? How is it that only yeah. now that, I, and the thing that tells time, A plus, 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 you know, that, uh, yeah, I think without the narration, without the fantasy life, with, but without that interpreter saying, Listen, this is the way I thought of it then, because mm. that was my reality. Um, and this leads me to, Jim, um, my question for you in our what kind of a recovery of craft to a degree, uh, sure. but not really the craft. Uh, your, I, I really do think this is a writer, as you said, it's writerly. This is a writer's movie. And so much that is in the dialogue and the narration. And so let me ask you this, your f three favorite lines. I got three favorites. What are your sure. three favorite lines? Well, I, I think just because of its interesting use, well, maybe I'll save that one for, for last. But yeah, uh, when, yeah when start with your third, move sure. up. Number three. When, when they unveil the, uh, the lamp and, and, and it says, the old man's eyes boggled overcome by art and i it's just that is this art but it's sort of a 
it's sort of a wonderful uh, little line and, and a little bit of a dig and, and yeah. kind of fun. Uh, the second, uh, the second, I like that there's a little bit of a paragraph, but it's mothers know nothing about creeping marauders. And then he sort of goes on. It's introducing that scene, yeah. uh, crawling through the snow to get to your back door. <laughs> so, something or coming effect. down a rope or climbing over. To, yeah. Yeah. So just because it, it kind of paints the picture and then it leads into that sequence. And I, and I think just because uh, of its ubiquity in the script and, and they have different characters using it to different degrees. Uh, you'll take your eye out, of course, is, is sort of, uh, I, I think, the, the, you know, classic. the gold, gold standard for lines. It's said by Santa. Yeah. It's written by the teacher and it's said by his mom. Uh, at the very least, there may have been other references. Everyone to was well. worried that he did, did put his eye yeah. out. Which... And apparently you can get marks taken off for saying, putting that in an essay. Because <laughs> he got a C plus. The reason why I'm giving you a C plus is because you could take your eye out. I'm like, how is that? Is it, can you do that as a teacher? But I was outraged last night. But yeah. anyway. Outraged. There, there is something that I think a weird reversal. You, if you had this theme or this running gag, it's not really a theme as, as it's a gag because then even in the eighties, I wanted a heck, I wanted a wrist rocket and all the old men is you're going to hurt yourself or your brothers. <laughs> you know, either yeah. way, there's no, no guns coming in our house. No, it, it, like even farm kids who had always had more experience with weapons than I did until I joined the military. Um, they were taught. Mm. Nobody, when I was growing up, had, oh, of course I had a semi-automatic <laughs> AR-15-like blah, blah, blah. Like, mm. th to have this running gag in a film now would be part of the American culture wars. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that is something that wouldn't hold up, you know, which is yeah. bizarre to me now. Okay. Well. Uh, for me... My favorite uh, is uh, going in reverse order. And this is a tough one. <laughs> but um, starting in number three, tapestry of obscenity. My father could oh, yeah. weave a tapestry of obscenities. Uh, and and I, I just, I loved that. That just that use of language, that just mm. wonderful use of language, I just thought that was great. Um, number two, uh, <laughs> I you know what I think uh, I think I'll use, and this is it comes to, same scene as yours. The only thing. They could draw me from the soft glow of electric sex yeah. gleaming in the window. <laughs> electric sex. Yeah. I just, I loved that. That was a great scene. Oh, yeah. And a great, and just, and, and going back to, like, I think that was a great moment in casting, Jim. Going to back where you're talking about how McGavin was more of a, a broader player where um, uh, Dylan, she's a little more, you know, actorly, let's say. Yeah. But that's great casting because that scene takes advantage of both and how much she hates that thing. But she's... Yeah. Oh dear Lord, that's not going to be in my home. And even yeah. how she breaks it later <laughs> and yeah. how he's like, I won this an award. <laughs> it was an award, well, yes. <laughs> not just What's an that? award. What was it? An award for, of distinction. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my, yeah. my number three in a child's word or in our world, in our, in our children's world, there's, you're either a bully a toady or one of the nameless rabble of victims. <laughs> it's like, that's my favorite line. I just, yeah. although I, I got to admit I could move around a bit, but right now it's like, or then, or one of the nameless rabble of victims. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah, that kind of summarizes those and power checks. dynamics in such a well-written line. Yes. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. like all of that. And that's this is the closest I may ever come to saying, wow, what a great script. But I can tell you as a professional voiceover artist of nowhere near the tier that uh, 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 Lee Shepard was on, uh, it's like, wow, I would love to read the words he wrote here. Like, yeah, like in, well, into a mic, but for an odd, well. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, yeah, that's, and, and that comes to my last thing. Uh, and I'll tell you my favorite performance was Lee Shepard's again, as, as great as all the performances were, it'd be a, a pretty meh Christmas movie without that narration and without his distinct narration, which is a performance. He was an actor, a performer like everyone else was. Mm-hmm. What would uh, your performance, favorite performance in this flick be? Uh, firstly, he actually also played uh, the man in line who said, "Hey, kid, where where do you think you're going?" That was uh, that was Gene Shepard there uh, in the movie. You know, I I, I quite liked the the um, the mum uh, Dylan there, yeah, uh, Melinda I, I Dylan. Did, Melinda Dylan. I I thought she did a, a good, and that, that's sort of an easy one because she. You know, she's had quite a career. I actually have a tweet here uh, that I stumbled onto this week, and I will read it out quickly. And it says, The moment in every man's life when he realizes that the mom in Christmas story was Hanrahan's wife in Slapshot is truly uh, is a truly confusing <laughs> amalgam of emotions. <laughs> and there's a picture of her as the mom in a kind of a sexy yeah. picture of her in bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so she's had quite a good career. But, yeah, she sort of is... is the, the, the earthy kind of, you know, you know, holds the house together, holds everything together. She's emotionally sort of, you know, keeps everything on an even keel. The even, yeah, the even keel. Yeah. She is Without, the keel and, of the family. Yeah. Uh, McGavin is the sail. Yes. Yeah. You know, and she's, or the she's wind, funny not her, the wind, the sail. Yeah. Reacting she's, she's, to the, the yeah. dogs, the... <laughs> <laughs> All these yeah. winds that blow on a family ship, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, and she's still allowed her own, you know, her own twitchiness and her own character traits and things like that. And and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I thought she did a great job. The kids were great too, uh, but uh, yeah, I thought she did a really great job. Oh, look at this from uh, from from a. Uh, 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 great friend of the show if you're in winnipeg <laughs> the gas station art center uh literally just uh just down the street from where i am not that far from where you live here in winnipeg uh is oh. doing a christmas story as a play in uh in december nice. might be worth well, checking out jim <laughs> we could do yeah, a parking yeah. lot re- <laughs> parking lot review of uh, the theater the theatrical adaptation of um yeah very cool that would be fun yeah uh this is uh waltz uh referring to what what, what we've been just talking about uh allows mcgavin to be over the top it creates a balance yeah they yeah you couldn't she, she's got to be the fo- she is mcgavin's foil mm. you know uh perfect foil they're they're perfect foils for each other yeah, yeah. you know but and it's interesting um <laughs> they both also kind of sit it I didn't I'm, I'm only noticing this now when the kids drops the F sharp oh yeah yeah dad doesn't do the punishing yeah dimes <laughs> dimes his son out to the mother and she's the one who does it yeah yeah you know that's a good point yeah which though in a great bit of storytelling sets up that, and and I think this is just great character development. It's why my favorite sequence works where she can say, I've already talked to him because dad obviously knows it's like, no, no, if she talked to him, she's no, she is, she may be soft, but she's not a soft D, mm. you know? Yeah, he's the yeller, but she's the one who'll say, "Here, <laughs> eat." <laughs> she's she's got a really she's got a really great moment there after the soap in the mouth scene, 
which you never hear about anymore, by the way, but the soap in the mouth scene, she sends him off to bed. and Just like she, beating your child in the phone because yeah, a true. neighbor said, hey, my kid said your kid. But she, uh, she you know. <laughs> Nothing she I just him. said there happens now. <laughs> no. Uh, she ushers him off to bed and uh, she takes a look at the soap and kind of smells it <laughs> and then just takes it, puts it in her own mouth. She goes, nope. You know, and what well, does? But she I, lets I it sit that, for a bit, like yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> bleh. yeah. And and I remember that scene. You know, the little beats. I'm like, as you're leading up to it, it's like, doesn't this happen? Oh yeah. And and and, and it's one of those little sneaky kind of character notes that, uh, that that are that kind of fun. You know, and and uh, yeah. you know, adds adds to the proceedings basically. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Jim. It is time to get into the denouement. Um, <laughs> DMG just uh, uh, just Googled uh, Dylan and Slapshot. Yowza, which is a great word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Given the film that we're talking about and the time mm-hmm. it's kind of mushily set in. All right, uh, Jim, let us, I guess we, we got to ask ourselves, you know, are we giving Bob Clark a pass or a fail? Does this movie hold up? Uh, yeah, I absolutely does. Yeah, I think it, you know, and I think we've discussed a lot of this in the past hour. This is a movie that lasted all this long. that's still watched. Why is that? And I think it's the approach that, that they decided to take. None of this was inevitable, but uh, yeah, I think it definitely pass. He passes. I, I'd give him an A. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. It. This is one of those classics that you can go. Well, yeah, no, it deserves that praise. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. great storytelling. It's great non-standard storytelling. It does things that a lot of filmmaking guides and uh, screenplay guides would say don't do. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't even just, well, voiceover is always kind of considered a lazy dodge, right? Um, This goes the exact opposite way. You couldn't have this movie without the narration. Just wouldn't work. Um, That idea of bringing the inner, the, you know, it's show don't tell. You got to tell with this one. You, Mm -hmm. You we're seeing the, him blah blah doing his thing and it's that tell like how do you, the it manages to bring that inner monologue that inner life out mm-hmm. by reading it to us <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. i yeah this is a remarkable film deserves all the praise it gets and with remarkably few like oh that yeah i, I thought that was funny once um yeah. but it's good you brought up 16 candles another film that i think holds up with a big asterisk you know mm-hmm. uh, some parts are just hard to see i it, it's not as bad uh i'm not sure i'd g- agree with dmg about the laughing with the asians singing the chinese singing this as you said it's a, it's inaccurate <laughs> but uh at the same time it's nowhere near it's not the whole heart of the gag uh, 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 that's another great shot. Uh, just to zip into final thoughts, Jim. Mm. That great shot of the there's M- Mother Parker. She's just she keeps laughing. She's she's having a hard time holding it together. Not in crying or oh this is all a horror. Just like you know like laughing because well here we are with this ridiculous duck and then mm. the chop <laughs> and the way they both, like it's another moment, like you were talking about when they're given the gift, another moment where they're like, they're laughing at their situation. And that's yeah. the cue for the kids to laugh at the situation. And they're, mm. and this is one thing I would agree with DMG. They're not laughing at the singing. Yeah. They're laughing at the whole situation. They're just like, well, here yeah. we are. <laughs> you know the absurdity uh, the, yeah. the absurdity of how they lost how they lost the turkey the 
how many times does the kid get away with logging? Like yeah. he learns no lessons other than his mother really loves him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I don't think he he didn't think his mother loved him before. <laughs> you know, like there is no lessons hey, wait here. Wait a minute. Yeah. This lady I live with uh Yeah. Yeah, I know I get it. Yeah. Um yeah, looks like we're getting some lag. YouTube is having a hard time. Oh, uh, really? But that's, you know what? That's here. Let's uh, let's see if that's the, the course. You know, uh, it could be uh, it could be that uh, my backup software kicked in. But uh, you know what? Okay. I've uh, pulled that off. So anyway, yeah, I I just yeah this this movie is it deserves all its accolades. Um, wow. Uh, anything yeah. else you want to add, Jim, before we, yeah. we should, I guess, talk a bit about next week, but uh, you know what, why don't you, uh, like add, uh, what, what do you have to say before we tell everyone what we're going to be doing next week or, or so or, when you were talking about or, the, uh, the lamp scene, uh, I just wanted to mention quickly the sexy clarinet music cue that comes in, uh, during it, I thought was hilarious. Uh, you know, we didn't, uh, talk. Uh, about music in this but that's such a great kind of that that slinky clarinet uh, sort of uh <laughs> tune that comes in when the leg is uh unveiled but yeah you know, you're right say, as as a winnipeg or as somebody who lives in the cold for a good chunk of the year not many movies get cold right this movie gets cold right and i think that's part of it i think that it's there's, you know, I don't know what the situation partly was. Partly shot the house. in Toronto. Partly, yeah. They had a Toronto yeah. casting agent. Uh, apparently, also shot a little bit in Cleveland, but yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of use of uh, you know out outdoor sets. You know, not so many uh, sort of maybe the house was in in the studio, but a lot of external shots. Uh, the alleyway, you know, there there it looked cold. Um, it, it, especially at night, you know, there was a scene and the sort of the shoppers and things. Oh, the, the gathering outside the uh, the window, the display window for the toys looked cold. They were all bundled up. The snow was real and messy. And there's there's other shots, like when he's walking through the alley, the, you know, there's obviously sort of a melt-thaw cycle. There's icicles everywhere. Art not exactly picturesque. There's one sort of scene of wonder where when he looks out on, there's been hoar frost overnight on Christmas Eve. And he looks out and, you know, that's when you hear the heart music. But aside from that, yeah. this movie does cold right and not a lot of movies do. Uh, so so kudos for that. That's a great point. Uh, the snow's real snow. Yeah. It looks it. It sounds it. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right, Jim. And, uh, yeah, you just, you feel like, yeah, this is winter. And the bundling up, like, I just... The, bundling up of children you yeah. know, little michelin men that that gag which is done in other films for some reason yeah. it just it works here in a way that uh yeah maybe it's because one yeah. of the first where we were starting to see that gag yeah know. yeah um uh yeah yeah some the certain external scenes were shot in cleveland mm -hmm. um the school scenes uh, a lot of the outdoor stuff was a uh, little bit in Cleveland, a little bit in Toronto, uh, St. Catharines, um, and uh, the studio, like any of the house shots were done in a studio in Toronto. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, yeah. yeah. Um, which is the, interesting um, for early 80s to have like yeah. a Hollywood North, you know, uh, that was, that, that was kind of unique because a lot of it was just like awful tax credit stuff. Yeah, is, yeah. Uh, I also I also like the the all I just noticed for the first time but in the flat tire scene they're coming across a bridge and they're actually surrounded by ships so it's that whole the, the whole Great Lakes city yeah. setting I, I I quite like too and I was like wow there's ships in the background here and not one but there's like three or four I that mean, was, they're and that was in, the Toronto some, that was that was those board. were the shot in Toronto all the, oh. the Great Lakes stuff laying up for the winter yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Jim, what are we what what are we what are we doing next week? This is a tough one, eh? Are we yeah. in uh are we in TBD zone? 
I think we're in TBZ zone. We can talk about it once we get to the, the green room here, but uh, the famous <laughs> green room. But uh, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of ideas and, and there's a yeah. lot of things happening. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll chat. We'll come up with something, I think. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get yeah. that out. You know what? This is a perfect example. Follow follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can also follow Jim on Twitter at uh, uh, J Chleboyko. Correct, mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, yes. and uh, we will have his. Uh, you know what? It's my bad this time, folks. We will have his fancy graphic uh, uh, up and running well, next I just week. Said, but, I just uh, sent it to you today, so thanks yeah. for that. But uh, yeah. um, I uh, no, no, I and I would have gotten it up, but I, I have a new microphone. I've <laughs> I got toys to play with. <laughs> Yay! Um, all right, everybody. Yeah. So next week we will let you know. Follow us on social media. Uh, we'll be back at 9.45. Just everything was running a little late today. But uh, we want to say, first of all, thanks. Thanks, Jelly Duck 100 uh, for, yeah. for coming by. Uh, Richard L. saw you early in the chat. And I know you and Katie are both engaged and, uh, well, more than engaged, but you're engaged in this show. That's what's important here. Uh, Katie Fowler, thank you very much for commenting, uh, especially letting us know about the uh, play. Uh, that's super cool. Might have to yeah. check that out. Maybe do a, do a, a Jim and Rob over on Lies Movies meetup. <laughs> um, uh, who, who else? Oh, yes, Walt65. And last but certainly not least, the man, the myth, the legend. Dragon movie guy. <laughs> anyway, great to uh great to see y'all here. Uh we uh yeah, what what else can I say, Jim, other than uh maybe uh giving everybody a big wave? Save me the aisle seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes I well, do. 